Okay. I'm going. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Vinton Town Council meeting for this uh, Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. Uh, good to see all of you inside in the air conditioning. Uh, if you would, please, let's start with the roll. Councilmember Lyles? Here. Councilmember McCarty? Here. Councilmember Mullins? Here. Vice Mayor Stovall? Here. Mayor Gross? Here. Well, obviously, we have a quorum. Uh, did that confuse you, that question? <laughs> Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, oh my goodness. Folks uh, here in the town of Benton, we use a moment of silence so that each of you can uh, or meditate as uh, you see fit. Uh, I hope you will be praying, and uh, will I will be praying. If you pray, I hope you'll keep this country and this community and this council meeting in your thoughts and prayers. And um, I don't think it's inappropriate to give thanks for air conditioning. What do you guys think? So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So if you'll stand for the moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance, who's doing that, Keith? Me. You are? Thank you, sir. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it remains, one nation, under God, Okay, as I said, certainly good to see all of you. Uh, the next item is community events and announcements. Uh, Council Member McCarty. Mm -hmm. On uh, July the 27th, there's Mingo at the Market with $5 Shake. That's from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Vinton Farmer's Market. On August the 5th, there is a blood drive from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the War Memorial. August the 6th is National Night Out at 6 p.m. at the War Memorial. And that is filled with lots of fun things to do. The children always have fun. The adults do, too. But there's lots of things for the kids to do there. Um, so please don't forget about that uh, September the 2nd the town offices will be closed in observance of Labor Day September the 7th is the Vinton Pink Warrior Walk at 5 p.m. at the Farmers Market you can register online at VentonVA.gov slash Pink Warrior Walk um, this is the first year of doing this we're very excited about that um, we have a great committee. Um, our very own Tony, our clerk, has kind of headed that up, so we appreciate that and uh, would love for you to sign up and join us. We also encourage folks to visit one of the many restaurants and entertainment venues in our community, um, such as Lancelot, Rosie's, Twin Creeks, Benton Bowling, uh, Defy Gravity, and for more information, you can find it on each of the venues websites or on social media and always for everything going on and happening in Benton please visit the in Benton Facebook page and don't forget to like and share you bet that's it thank you ma'am lots of activities in Benton that's for sure and with that we'll move on to our uh, council activities please ma'am okie dokie starting um, July 4th Mayor Gross attended four on the fourth run Councilman Lyles and Mayor Gross attended a celebration at the Vinton War Memorial. On July 10th, Council Members Mullins and McCarty attended Public Works and then later that day, the Pink Warrior Walk Committee meeting. Uh, July 15th, Vice Mayor Stovall attended a roundtable discussion with Ben Klein. And today, earlier today, Council Members Lyles, McCarty, Mullins, and Vice Mayor Stovall toured um, the RV TV studios. And that was so nice, and we missed you very much. Sorry. Um, we'll, we'll give you another tour another time. We didn't was, come because great. the dog's going to bait for dinner. That's why we didn't come. <laughs> when it's my turn, I disappeared. We won't make you. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you folks uh, had a good evening. Good afternoon. So, all right. With that, we'll move on to a uh, request to postpone or change the order of the agenda. We are, we good? Okay. And with that, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Tonight, it uh, contains the uh, minutes of the regular meeting of January 2nd, 2024. Are there any changes or additions? No? 
Oh, you need backup. Hearing none, roll. Who made the motion? I'll make, make a motion. All right. I'll second. Put the motion first. I did. Okay. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. I don't see any awards tonight. Boo hoo. <laughs> yeah. We gotta find out. Let's do perfect attendance or something, right? So, uh, so we'll move on to uh, citizens' comments and petitions, and uh, this is uh, this section is reserved for comments and questions that are not listed on the agenda. So, if you uh, have any comments, this is your time, and I guess you have the list. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. I have Philip Pushy. I am Philip C. Bushy III, 183 Sanderson Ridge Court, Roanoke, Virginia, 24019. Mayor, Vice Mayor, all members of Town Council and staff, thank you for this time tonight to again explain Love Life's future presence at 935 3rd Street when Summit Medical Center opens. Again, Love Life Roanoke is part of a national organization charged with uniting Christ's church to stand against abortion and thus solve the orphan crises. Since 2021, through the power of the Holy Spirit, 61 moms in Roanoke have reported to us that they have chosen life. 13 of those saves were this year alone. Two weeks ago, an Uber driver who stopped to talk with us after dropping off a young woman at Planned Parenthood spoke with one of our counselors who was here tonight and ended up giving his life to Christ. Love Life offers direct support through pregnancy through the pregnancy, abusive relationship guidance, post-abortive restoration services, and even adoption procedures. We know why Summit Medical is coming to Vinton. Abortion is a big business, masked in the colloquialism banner of healthcare. Until Virginia representatives and our state senators give the governor legislation to sign into law, the Roanoke Valley will remain the abortion hub of the southeastern United States. Summit Medical knows that in all the almost 30 years that Planned Parenthood and Second Street downtown have been opened, more than 30,000 unborn babies have been slaughtered here in our midst. More sad facts are that these do not include any of the pills that are given out, the abortion pills. Vinton has pr uh, promised and practice relief standing by and ready through Love Life, through our 44 member churches, and of course, Blue Ridge Women's Center. The ramifications that will happen when Summit Medical opens up and as their marketing and advertising draws folks to this community, Love Life Roanoke and Blue Ridge Women's Center will be here with non-judgmental and loving care. We've seen all these things before. We see them every day we serve on the street. At such time, the Vinton, we would like to meet with the Vinton police when they are ready, and we request a meeting to define a safe, effective standing area at 935 3rd Street so our ministry can access those who stop to talk with us coming into and leaving the facility. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Adam Triplett. Madam Triplett, 4043 Mockingbird Hill Road, Roanoke, Virginia, 24012. I serve as one of the pastors at Waverly Place Baptist Church in southeast Roanoke City, which is about a mile down the road from here. I also serve on the board for the Blue Ridge Women's Center. Good evening, Council. I come before you this evening to speak to you about Summit Medical Center, the proposed abortion facility that is slated to arrive in this community soon. 
I know there have been a number of folks who have come before you to speak in opposition about this business, and there are a number of you who stand in opposition as well. I'm thankful to hear that the tenor of our community is one that continues to value life, to value families, and the opportunities of all people to live, no matter how small they may be. And this brings me to the main reason that I'm here tonight. I stand before you not to repeat the horrors of abortion and the social ills such as human trafficking and sexually illicit activities that have been known to accompany these clinics, but instead I want to encourage you and share our support of you as a council in stopping this business from opening using whatever means you have at your disposal. At the last meeting, Mayor Gross, you commented that you did not believe there was anything that could be done uh, as you saw it. And sir, I, I don't know the, the ramifications or the possibilities on a policy level, but I, I do disagree with you on a citizen's level. Uh, for far too long in our city and in our nation, we have relied on policies, legislation, and laws to execute morality and ethics and have forgotten what it means to be citizens who seek the good of our home and the flourishing of the people in it. I say this because I want you to know this evening that we are here to support you as you pursue the prevention of this business from opening. As a pastor, I want you to know that I, along with many pastors in this valley, some of them here with me tonight, not to mention countless Christians, are willing and ready to do whatever it takes within our churches and within this community to make this town and this city and the surrounding counties a place where life is preserved and hope actual real true hope is offered. We are thankful for government officials who have backbones and are willing to fight for the triumph of good and the judgment of evil. That is what you have been called and commissioned to do, not just by the citizens, but by God himself. We are also thankful for organizations like the Blue Ridge Women's Center, and Love Life Ministries built to support those in crisis pregnancy situations. But Council, I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. We promise to work alongside you in making Vinton a wonderful, wonderful place to live. As Christians in this community, we will fight for truth, we will fight for goodness, and we will fight for beauty to flourish in this place. May we be Your those who up, do sir. just this. Your time's up, sir. Next one, please. I am unable to read the next name. I think it's hard to see, but the last name looks like it's um, Patton. Um, the email is Annette. Oh. Oh. This I didn't have a chance to sign up and sit outside. I'm not. Okay. I don't know how these things work. Okay. That's what, um, there's no, okay, I can go to the next person. Um, I think it's Brandon. You just don't have to sign a sheet. Oh, no, you're fine. So you, you both, you both are those ones? Okay. All right, that's fine. Ann Russell is next. My name is Ann Thurston Russell. I live at 342 Stonebridge Drive. I'm the CEO of... I'm sorry. I'm the CEO of Blue Ridge Women's Center. And I've stood up here now. This is the third time. But I want to explain to you why I'm so passionate about what I do. In 1990, I was in an abusive situation in college. And I found myself pregnant after one of those nights. All my friends told me I should get an abortion, that it would just be so easy to erase. <clears throat> I chose life, and I have a 33-year-old daughter, and I have three beautiful grandchildren because of that. That's what gave me the passion to do what I do every day, to meet with women and with fathers who are struggling with a choice, a choice that is a permanent choice based on temporary circumstances. I see the pain that they feel when they've come back after making that decision and how it grieves them and they feel like it's the unforgivable sin and it's not. I felt I owed it to you guys to express to you why I've been here and I've been so passionate about this cause. 
I see what abortion does to our community, what it does to the women, what it does to the families. And I want to thank each of you because I know that you have all been doing everything that you can do to try to ensure that this doesn't happen. I took my staff off site yesterday for a day of spiritual retreat. Each of you were prayed over. You were prayed for in this whole whole decision process and, and, and trying to figure out what the best steps are. So I want you to know I appreciate each of you and we will be continuing to pray for each of you. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate your prayers and your comments. The next person I have is Travis Hilton. Mayor and Vice Mayor and Town Council, Travis Hilton. I am resident of Roanoke, Virginia, 6405 Monet Drive. I am um, I'm here as a local resident, as a father and a grandfather, which I was reminded as I was looking at my glasses, uh, so with my grandson earlier, and I have a smear, uh, hard to see, with smear on my glasses, um, and a pastor, Crystal Spring Baptist Church, I, w I want to say that my concern uh, resonates with those that have already expressed opposition to the proposed abortion clinic. Um, I was able to observe what was said last week, and I would say also I resonate with those concerns and all that was expressed, and I won't repeat all those things that have been said, but um, I want you to know uh, that um, I am here to express support for you and uh, to let you know that our church has already been praying fervently for all of you. And as we were made aware of the certain possibilities of this uh, coming again to our area, we are very much aware of two abortion clinics that already exist. As we see the license plates from other states coming here to our beautiful area that we love. We, we love this place. We think of the future of our children and our grandchildren, and, and we see even currently violence that has erupted on all levels of our country, violence that we saw manifest even uh, in a former president's uh, on, on a platform. And we, we see this, and we want to do everything that we can to thwart this from happening. And in our city, we understand that, um, that there's a great need. There's a great need for care for those who are uh, in distress and uh, in crisis and to make the right choices. We thank God for this Blue Ridge Women's Center that we also support uh, to try to help those women in crisis. But, uh, but we want you to know that we want to encourage you to do everything within your power everything that you can to stop this from happening again. We don't need another abortion clinic in this area. What we need is for the, those made in the image of God to be lifted up and to do everything that we can to help them. And our church and, and me as everything within my power, I promise that I'm going to join you in doing that in every way that we can. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Joe, can you state your last name, please? Pickford. Pickford, okay, thank you. Joe Pickford, 1603 Gaines Street, Salem, Virginia. Uh, thank you for having me to, uh, to speak. Um, last time I was here, I, I said it was a fearful and awful th thing for you to fall into the hands of an angry God. Well, that was, in, that was incorrect. That's a quote from a theologian named Jonathan Edwards. The correct uh, rendition of that is in Hebrews 10.31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. 
Now, if you're a Christian, you all know you know who he is. That living God died, rose again for your and my sins. In case anybody happened to look that up, I just wanted to straighten that out. <laughs> So uh, I have a there's a, the same that's it's just it's a warning in both both ways either either way you look at it uh, after having the knowledge of a will, willfully sinning anyway there remains no more place for sin to hide Jesus knows what that sin is and he he was going to punish that sin no doubt about it you know you don't have any play, play, where else to go. Uh, a, council, a council person at the end of the last meeting said, we follow the law, not religion. Well, we at Love Life, we don't follow the, the law, nor do we follow religion. We follow a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the maker of law. He's the one who gave it in the beginning. And he's the one who will uphold it in the end. I just uh, believe that listen to all these folks speak, uh, you'll, you'll find out that you can be a hero in this town. All you have to do is say no. You know, the 60, the what, 60s verse was just say no about drugs, just say no about abortion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's all. That all? Anyone else? No. All right. Thank you for your comments. With that, we will move on to our uh, public hearing for this evening. And I understand this is uh, concerning a special use permit uh, for the Advancement Foundation. And so I will officially open the public hearing and I have a report from staff. Nathan, I understand you're going to do the honors this evening. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good Vice to Mayor, see Mayor, you. Council. Good to see you as well. Uh, so there's a briefing on July 2nd on the special use permit. Um, the nature of this request, uh, Ms. Annette Patterson, owner of the Advanced Foundation, is requesting a special use permit for a proposed flea market use or vendor market use, uh, which is a use permitted by a special use permit in the Central Business District, subject to the approval of uh, the Vintown Council. So the staff report and the briefing covered all the uh, details about the proposed use. Uh, I just want to mention that there are two conditions attached to this approval, one being that the flea market use um, or vendor market use shall only be permitted Permitted in the footprint of the structure, um, and that condition is listed in the ordinance. And the second uh, condition has to do with um, the all the activities happening within the structure, uh, but not it wouldn't preclude them from following the, the outdoor display ordinance, which is currently in our ordinance. Um, so that's the, the staff report section, but um, most of it was covered during the briefing on July 2nd. Uh, I will mention that uh, Brandon Hall, the operator of the farm shop, and um, the intended operator of the, of the business operations here, uh, and also Annette Patterson with the Advanced Foundation is also present. Um, and they'll be uh, presenting and be open to answer any questions uh, tonight as well. But are there any, are there any questions for staff? Do you have any questions? Okay. So we're going to make a presentation now, is that right? Is that? Yeah. The clicker's right there, just on the side, turn it on. <laughs> you can pull it up. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Good evening, and thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak with you. Um, we are very excited at the Advancement Foundation to partner with Brandon Hall of Farm Shop um, to create a second entrepreneurial opportunity here in Vinton. As most of you know, we reopened the Hive Business Incubation Center at 214 West Lee Street, right at the end of the farmer's market. Um, that is primarily office space, um, and we have attracted a couple of businesses already um, to that space. And then partnering with Brandon, um, he is an incredible operator of the farm shop and has had a lot of success. And in talking with him about opportunities to bring retail um, to the town, um, to create a walkability um, with the sidewalks and people coming to the great restaurants and the brewery, to be able to come and shop, especially after they've had a few beers, would be really great. Um, but we decided to create a marketplace for entrepreneurs, to attract entrepreneurs who are making high 
quality products or are buying and wholesaling um, high quality products. Um, and so Brand is going to give you a presentation. Um, we've had a, a, just a fit about the wording of flea market because that is not at all what this is going to be. Um, and I think you'll see in some of his pictures um, what is intended is to have a real showcase. Um, so Brandon, take it away. <laughs> thank you. Again, thank you all for having us. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of roll through this a little bit quick and um, I'll open for, for any questions. Like she said, I know that there's a lot of uh, back and forth on the flea market um, verbiage. So that's one thing we want to get away from. I think I'll start out by saying this is not going to be a yard sale. <laughs> so. Um, We've got, we're, we're really, like she said, we're trying to create a, a true shopping destination. So like a, a, a mini mall, if you will, um, inside of 301 South Pollard. So um, with, with that being said, I've mapped out over um, 20 booths. So we're anticipating over 20 new businesses to be able to come into Vinton. So um, this could be really, over any, let me go to the next slide. So we've got um, we've got twenty booths laid out. So I've got a couple different sizes, and we did that in in a way so that way we could do the retail incubator. So that way we could start with folks who want to come in at, at the lowest amount, so that smallest booth in the middle, um, and move up, as you will. And, you know, the goal for this is to really bring in um, more businesses to Vinton. So we're not really targeting folks who are just coming in to open up a booth in like an antique mall. Uh, we really want to help um, businesses grow through business plans, um, through our events and everything. Um, so like the goal, the goal is to see these people come in on the four by four, move up throughout the ranks and then move out and open their own storefront in Benton. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we, we don't expect the same vendors to be there all the time. They'll start out on a three month contract and then move month to month. Um, so that being said, you know, each booth will be set up completely different. Um, they'll have their own displays, their own lighting, logos, um, paint, wallpaper, whatever they want to do to make that little space in there their own shop and completely change the whole aspect of everything. Um, so right now we have a couple vendors in the store already and they'll be moving into their own uh, booths. So. We've got home decor, candles, general store items, um, pantry goods. We've got self-care, lotions, stuff like that. Uh, we've got a baby boutique that's wanting to come in for um, kids' items and um, clothes and stuff. We've got apparel. Um, so really just open it up to anything. You know, we're, we're not going to limit anyone here. I think that a lot of the places around town are either focus specifically on antiques or handmaids. So I think that's where you lose a lot of business because there are folks that buy wholesale and are trying to get away, get people away from the big box stores like Walmart and Target and everything. And that's kind of what we want to bring into Vent. You know, there's not a lot of shopping on South Pollard. So it would be nice to be able to go into one store and shop from over 20 different businesses. Um, so since we opened in uh, December, we were just right behind the farmer's market in a little cottage on the hill. I was 422 square foot building and day one we had over a thousand people come in there. Um, so just based off of that, you know, I knew if I can do that with that little space, I knew we could really grow here in Benton. Um, so we've had a couple different events already. Um, we've done very well. We've got another one planned uh, for next month and hopefully all of construction will be done and everything and we'll have all the vendors in place by then. Um, so like I said, with we plan to streamline a strong path uh, for our entrepreneurs to grow their business with roots right here in town. So like I said, we want them to continue to grow with us and open that storefront somewhere right here in Benton. Um, and with that being said, you know, I've mentioned before Benton will come become to be a top shopping destination. There's a lot of folks that travel from here to go to Roanoke to shop. You know, I, and myself being one of those people. Um, so I'd like to kind of change that within our community. Um, 
So we've got, like I said, a couple other different uh, events planned. You know, one thing I, I really do want to focus on um, are family friendly events. So we've got, um, like I said, the kids corner and the baby boutique and everything coming in. So we'll have um, booth trick or treating. So they'll be able to go to each one of the booths and kind of do that. We'll have Santa come in and, and really try to bring the community together at this place. Um, so that's all I have for you guys. I appreciate you uh, having me. Do we have any questions? <laughs> I like where you ended that. <laughs> Thank you. Are I you was in? hoping somebody would yeah, get that. That was good. That was good. good. Council? Questions? Comments? Um, I serve on the planning commission too, so I got to see the other one also. So. Oh. Okay. I asked all my questions back then. <laughs> okay. All right. I just uh, briefly one or one or two quick. I think you said a total of twenty uh, possible. Okay. Um, are these folks also going to be participants in the gauntlet? Huh? We hope so. Absolutely. Okay. We will encourage that um, and talk with them about how to scale, um, how to market. All you know, help them develop a real business plan. Okay. Um, so we will coach them. Yes. Okay. One of the anticipated. Uh, Booth, but she she just completed the gauntlet, so uh, we've we're we're close knit. So all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard you say that uh, hopefully those folks could grow. So I thought, well, what better way? That's the goal. Yeah. Well, great presentation. Thank you. Um, yes. I honestly believe that one of the one of the sole or one of the duties of government is to uh, enhance economic development and um, you know economic development can't always start out big right. it's got to start out small and you know I mean in, in reference to the 20 spaces but you know that's exactly what we want and she said it well not only do we want come we want people to come in here and shop we want them to eat right and then we want them to do whatever else they want to do however but um, but yeah, congratulations! I think it's it's a great idea, and um, and I'm looking forward to see it be successful. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. You want it? Those are your current hours that you had showed up there, like yes. Wednesday and Sunday closed. Yes. Okay. So we're come by. We had noticed um, during these J months, um, it, business is not how it usually is um so i think that during the holiday season and everything we'll probably probably open up a little bit later yeah. um but for right now this is what we're on yeah. I'm, I'm sure you'll be there huh? about the energy, that's for sure <laughs> well thank you folks good presentation thank you. good luck thank you thank you all right so we kind of covered the last part or if there's uh, no other questions or comments i will officially close the public hearing <laughs> council you have before you an ordinance uh, that would uh, grant a special use permit for the uh, proposed uh, it's not a flea market <laughs> marketplace right um uh, as you do and of course uh, we've all heard the uh, presentation this evening so any further comments no nope. i'll so move the ordinance all right i'll second all right we have a motion by uh vice please. mayor soval second by council member marlins please call the rule Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember mccarty yes Councilmember mullins yes vice mayor stovall yes. mayor gross yes and it passes. Good luck, folks. Good Thank to have you, you in town. Hey, How you doing, bud? All right. And uh, with that, we will move on to uh, uh, public comments uh, on our ordinance, uh, proposed amendment to the Vinton uh, Zoning Ordinance. So we will officially open that public hearing. And good to see you again, Nathan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so once again, uh, these proposed zoning ordinance amendments were uh, the brief were held during the briefing, um, were presented at the briefing on July 2nd. Uh, just specifically to uh, to state the proposed amendments, uh, the first one would be uh, to require a special use permit for alternative financial institutions in the GB General Business, business District. Um, currently, it's allowed by right in GB, but this would uh, require a special use permit. Um, uh, the second one would be to change the permissions for special uh, personal service businesses to allow them by right in the RB residential business district. Uh, third, to amend the standards for vehicle storage and impoundment lots to uh, clarify the setbacks uh, for those types of uses. Uh, 
Fourth is to amend the yard and screen requirements for swimming pools, tennis, or pickleball courts. Um, that's more of a clarification than maintenance item within the ordinance. Fifth, uh, to amend the standards for landscaping. One, to be more clear about where trees are required uh, during, in development projects. Um, to add a definition for canopy coverage and allow staff to make modifications when the canopy coverage requirement is uh, too restrictive for developers or uh, property owners. Um, Six would be to remove the maximum motor vehicle requirements that were um, passed and included in part of, as part of the ordinance in 2022. And then uh, seventh would be to amend the definition of flea market to uh, call it, to allow for it to be called a flea or vendor market, and also to tie the definition to the functionality of the use, not the nomenclatures surrounding what a flea market is um, or what someone thinks the idea of one is, but to actually tie it to what the functionality of the, the booth rentals and what that actually is. And and to add, once again, vendor market to that definition section. But those are the seven proposed uh, changes um, and all the, the uh, justifications for each during the staff report. But I'm also open to answer any questions about the reason behind these zoning amendment changes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Council? You're our resident expert on this, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> again, on the planning commission. I already heard it. Yep. Okay, good. In depth. <laughs> All right. Any other public comments on this? Uh, Council, if you don't have any uh, other comments or questions, I will we'll officially close the public hearing. Again, you have before you an ordinance this evening, and uh, that would approve the proposed amendments as outlined uh, by Mr. McClellan. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. A motion by Councilman Lyles, a second by Councilmember McCarty. Please call the roll. Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember McCarty? Yes. Councilmember Mullins? Yes. Vice Mayor Stovall? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Obviously, it passes. And with that, we'll move to our items uh, requiring uh, action. And uh, Nathan, I see your name on this one too, my friend. <laughs> You're going to go for the hat, right? That, that's right. Yeah, that's, right. That's, right. That's, right. that's right. No, Lori likes that one. <laughs> uh, so the, the resolution before you is authorizing the town manager to file an application for uh, the VDOT Smart Scale funds uh, or for an application for the Smart Scale project. Uh, so this application is due August 1st and requires a resolution by the governing body. The grant application is for the conversion of the intersection of Washington Avenue and Bypass Road from what it currently is a signalized intersection to a two-lane roundabout with additional pedestrian accommodations in the immediate area um, and so this application would would cover the required preliminary engineering right-of-way phase and construction phase um, and uh, uh, with that uh, being said even th the application is due August 1st um, if awarded we would be notified by that by next year um, just keeping in terms of the six-year program that VDOT operates under, uh, if this was funded, we wouldn't see any kind of construction moving forward until 2030, 2031. Okay. Um, but but the, for this uh, smart skills cycle, this the grant application is due um, August 1st. Uh, but if you have any questions about the application, uh, we do want to thank our Salem District Office uh, and their engineering consultants for working with the town staff on this project and helping us build an application that, that would um, be ready to the scale it needs to be for, our, for application for the budget and um, the scope. So, Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Council, any thoughts, any comments, questions? And just to clarify, this is just to allow the application yes, to VDOT. Yeah. Nothing, you know. Yeah, this, this enables yeah. Staff, town staff to right. submit the application. Right. Okay. So, in other words, there, there would be a lot of detailed studies that would involve the public long before anything gets started, right? Yeah, if awarded and uh, before, and when's it um, in later phases, interest engineering. So about 2030, you say, well, I hope we're all still serving old council. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and I might mention, too, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the process, uh, we, we as council uh, hear about uh, these items 
alone before tonight. So they usually go through a committee uh, made up of uh, council members and of course staff uh, informs us. So by the time it gets to this uh, place, it looks like a quick and easy vote, but we've already been pretty well educated on them. And so uh, this is certainly not the first time we've heard about this. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, uh, if, 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 first of all, any questions, thoughts, comments? Okay. If not, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the resolution by uh, Councilman Lyles, a second by Councilmember McCarty. Please call the one. Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember McCarty? Yeah. Councilmember Mullins? Yes. Vice Mayor Stovall? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Thank you. All right. Public Works Committee report. I understand you're going to do that one, right, Cody? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Actually, um, I'm going to handle the majority of it, and then we have two quick items that uh, Town Manager Peters will also cover that was discussed during the committee. So I'm covering this. Uh, Public Works Committee, uh, Council Members McCarty and Mullins met last week for their bi-monthly meeting, um, had a lot of project updates, uh, so we can run through those fairly quickly. Uh, the street sign replacement project continues apace. Midway is essentially done, and which is uh, which is excellent. So, um, if you're seeing the new street signs, they are green, rounded edges with white outline borders. So those should be appearing. Um, across all of Midway, and then the next area of focus will be the Bally High area off of uh, Mountain View Road, and then continuing apace, uh, likely throughout the rest of the calendar year for the entire town, moving along uh, the routes of the trash truck. Mountain View Road, I am happy to announce, is essentially substantially done. Woohoo! Paving is complete uh, at, at long last. We're still awaiting the striping contractor. We have not been notified when the striping contractor will come out. Um, you may remember VDOT is administering this project for us, so um, they're just trying to get the striper uh, coordinated with their schedule. But as soon as we hear when they're coming out, um, we will let you and the public know. But for all intents and purposes, um, the Mountain View Road is complete. Full full rebuild using the FDR process underneath and then paving yeah. top coat asphalt. And I would just uh, also like to point out and remind the public that the speed limit is 25 <laughs> miles an hour. Um, otherwise, uh, Chief Drummond's uh, staff may be paying you a visit. And you might uh, be able to sit on my front porch and realize that they're not going 25. Yes, sir. Here might be your first <laughs> But the speed limit is 25 on that very nicely newly paved road. Um, signal lights, uh, we have, they are still on order at the intersections of Pollard Street and Virginia Avenue, and then blinking yellow arrows at Bypass in Washington, and also there at Pollard and Virginia. So as soon as we get scheduled with Elliot, we'll um, make the announcement and um, coordinate those. And then uh, we had some floodplain restoration area over near um, the uh, five and 600 block of Cleveland Avenue. So along the Greenway that has been uh, seeded and strawed. And if we ever get consistent rain and good weather, the grass will continue to grow over there. But I'm providing some nice floodplain mitigation over at that end of town at the far end of Cleveland Avenue. Niagara Road has been opened at both ends. Uh, the Water Authority's project is complete. We're still um, monitoring some settling on that very large, very deep hole, and um, make, they are maintaining that and watching that. We will pave that once um, we feel reasonably sure that the settling has occurred and we won't have to repave it again or dig up the paving once again. And then the stormwater drain project at the intersection of Niagara and Wyndham has now been completed and that part of the road is back open as well. We have received uh, an engineer's estimate for a stormwater project at the intersection of South Pollard, Jefferson, and Cedar. It's about a 400 linear foot project, including some additional drop inlets from Jefferson across Pollard and then down Cedar Avenue, connecting into a new stormwater line at First Street. So uh, the engineer's estimate, we're reviewing that. We're looking over some options to see if that project can be done in-house or bid out, but um, that current 
curve where you're coming in by the efficiency in on Pollard has held water during a storm event for many, many years, and this would seek to rectify that and just add an additional improvement along that entire channel of stormwater, uh, the stormwater pipe network that runs through that area. We have received bids for the, Paul, uh, the fall paving schedule. Um, we call it the fall paving schedule, even though in the past two years it has bled into the spring and this year into the summer. Um, but we are working with Superior, formerly known as Boxley, on getting that um, sussed out. Uh, likely the first phase of the annual paving schedule will be the Bally High neighborhood. So Olney Road will be the large loop and everything in between. And then also the small Spur Road of Ashley Court off of Ruddle Road. Uh, this will essentially complete um, over the past couple years the that entire um, end of the town, that north end of the town, with the exception of the Hallahurst neighborhood, Hallahurst, Jeanette, Preston, right there. We would look at that if we had some extra money this year or possibly next year. But essentially, the vast majority of that northern part of town branching off from Mountain View Road and Ruddle will have been completed after this uh, coming year. Um, the secondary part, the second part of this annual paving cycle, we'll be looking at uh, West Lee and uh, parts of downtown. And then we're also holding out money to do South Pollard right through the middle of downtown. Um, you all and the public and uh, I hate and Annette and Brandon had left them, but business owners. Um, South Pollard gets a lot of action. It's had a lot of cuts over the years that we've tried to mitigate. We are anticipating more as other businesses develop. So we have put money uh, in the budget that you all approved to repave that. And really it's just a matter of timing. We wanna to try to do it once at an ideal time to try to minimize future cuts. Um, but um, there is money there to do it, so hopefully that'll be a nice uh, sort of addition to the downtown area infrastructure when we can get it done. Um, and the last thing of note to talk about, um, Lynn Haven Circle, there was that request that came in to council for um, to make it a one-way street. Uh, at a council meeting a couple weeks ago, we had some citizens come and voice concern over that. We have done our due diligence in investigating that problem and at the committee's recommendation, uh, we'll not be moving forward with that request. And uh, we've um, asked the clerk to draft an official letter to the person who made the request signifying the denial of that one-way change on Lynn Haven Circle. So um, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Peters. Uh, we also discussed uh, to the mayor's point in detail the roundabout project, but that has already been covered. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of council. Just a couple of additional comments. Um, we did receive a proposal from a property owner in downtown um, to do some uh, two public courtyards and some alley improvements um, in conjunction with uh, some some building renovations that he is anticipating. So um, he, he had submitted a proposal that would uh, involve um, some town funds because a lot of it is town infrastructure that he would be proposing to make updates to. So I took that proposal through two members of council just to present that to them through the committee uh, to get the initial feedback. So I will continue uh, based on their recommendation to, to uh, enter into discussions with the developer and see if we can come up with some terms of, a, of an acceptable performance agreement for council to consider at a future date. The second item uh, deals with um, some property very close to here, just um, to the rear uh, of our property, uh, property known formerly as Steve's Garage. The town purchased that property primarily for blight abatement. Um, the property did, or the business did relocate within town, um, but we have owned that property for, um, I've been here nine years and we've owned it my entire time. And we have looked at several functions uh, to redevelop that property. However, with the acquisition of um, the McClung property or the current lease with the right um, to purchase and the development of 80 plus parking spaces, uh, it was my recommendation to the committee that we consider disposing of this publicly owned property because it is, a, we feel like, of a commercial value. So um, my recommendation to the committee was to draft a request for proposals that we would submit through the public sector private sector, excuse me, um, and to solicit potential um, re reuse, uh, readaptation, reuse of that property. Um, what's important about an RFP process is that you are still in control. Uh, we would 
bring any proposals to you for future consideration. You could weigh those, value those um, based on what you feel like would be the highest best use of that property and you could accept or reject those. So it's a process we've done successfully with a, a number of projects. Um, um, partnership with both the county, such as the former uh, library, the two schools, Rolney Cook and William Bird, uh, the Vineyard Station property, which we didn't own, but we had a active lease on that property, and we, through the RFP process, was able to um, recruit the developer who ended up producing what we have today. So this is a process that's worked fairly well for us, and and through the committee's recommendation, we'll we'll. We'll take that process forward, and any um, proposals that we receive, we would bring forward to council for consideration Oops. and a public hearing, which is required when you dispose of publicly owned property. All right, good deal. That's a long meeting. All right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thanks. It, it, it was long. It took two people to explain it. Well, they had to explain it to us first. Think about that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks. Yeah, y'all. Obviously, you guys have been doing a lot of hard work. So, thank you for that. Uh, all right. I know we're going to have a long report from our town attorney, Jeremy. Uh, you're looking good as always, man. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll uh, talk to you a little bit later this evening. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Mr. Manager, do you have anything further? I think uh, with the updates that we provided through the work committee, we've covered all the most relevant items. So. Okay. Yeah, nothing else to add. Be happy to answer questions as you have. All right, thank you, sir. Um, council, uh, I guess we've gotten to the good part where you can make your comments, Mr. Vice Mayor. We'll start with you. You have anything further this evening? I just uh, received some comments from some friends that don't live in Benton that came to Benton for the fireworks. Oh yeah, and talked about how great they were. I didn't, as was reported, I didn't quite make it back with family, but. However, they thoroughly enjoyed it and said they thought it was the best they'd seen in a long time. It was good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Anything else? No, sir. I'm good. Maybe you have um, I just want to say upcoming, um, a William Bird graduate from my year that um, has been living in Sweden for years and has gone through some health issues in the past that we all took up things and sent to her from Venton. Oh, she's coming in. She's in oh. She's in the country. She will be um, in Venton this week and hope to see her. And I know she's going to be excited to see all the changes since she was last here a couple years ago. There's a lot of changes. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. That, was that it? Yes, okay. yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, again, I'd just like to thank everybody that took a part in the 4th of July and from the preparing for it, the planning, the volunteers, the event and then the cleanup we always do an amazing job so thank you and and staff thank you took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> all right but yes the fireworks were good i um had had a long day i stopped in there real quick and right before the fireworks started i went home and watched them from my house <laughs> yeah but it was and they still look just as they still look great from up there too you have a good view i do yeah clear view <laughs> clear oh, view. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he lives on clear views. That was good. That was worse than lemonade. <laughs> uh, I, I too, uh, would like to comment on the 4th of July celebration. It was awesome. The fireworks were great. Big crowd. Um, some of the numbers I've heard are those. Uh, uh, are those numbers that we have uh, verified uh, with, with our uh, with our service? Are those? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. I would I'd be more than comfortable sharing the number of uh, folks who we estimate who were at the War Memorial proper, um, roughly between the hours of six and ten p.m. that night. Uh, the best estimate we have is about 5,000 people for that event. So that's that's easily matching um, some of the best. And then our slightly less reliable estimates um, would see uh, many multiples of that throughout the rest of the town. So um, yeah. I, I would okay. say we are 
We were extremely blessed to have very large crowds in the town of Enton that day. Yes, we were. And thank you. I didn't mean to put you guys on the spot there about the numbers. But we had a big crowd. There's no doubt about it. And uh, everyone has mentioned uh, how great the evening was. Uh, but uh, that's because a lot of hard work went into that. And our, our folks did a great job. It was very well organized. And uh, just just a really a super evening. Also, the early morning activity, uh, the uh, four on the fourth uh, race uh, was well attended and uh, a lot of fun, a lot of enthusiasm and everything there. So it was fun too. Just a, just a good time to be in Vinton. So appreciate it. cooperated. Yeah, yeah. It well, did. it did cooperate, just barely, but it did. So it was yeah. good. Yeah. All right, so uh, with that, we will move to our uh, closed session. Uh, Mr. Lyles, I understand you have a recommendation. Yes, I move that the, that the town council of the town of Vinton convene in closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711.A.8 for the purpose of consultation with the town attorney regarding zoning and other regulations of medical facilities in the town that requires the provision of legal advice by the town attorney. All right. So we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll we second. take a vote on that, right? Yes. I'll Is second. That? All right. Okay. All in favor of the uh, post session, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, same sign. Thank you, folks. We are going to post session. Thank you for being here.